let us talk about uh, clock in microcontrollers uh, so how a clock is to be used and what are the different uh, uh, internal clocks that are present uh, we will take a microcontroller example and then we will start uh, talking about it so starting with before going to the clock uh, we will talk about the basic difference between crystal and a oscillator uh, so basically crystal is a two pin device uh, as you see here uh, and uh, it has it is basically a passive device whereas oscillator needs power to uh, operate you can see here this is uh, uh, the crystal and this is the oscillator so now this cannot work independently so if uh, a crystal has to work it has to be a a added to with an additional circuitry of uh, a buffer a resistor and then respective uh, capacitors uh, for resonance uh, so that it produces the required mechanical vibration so we will see about that circuit in the next page so remember that there is an additional circuitry required with this crystal um, to generate a frequency whereas oscillator has a inbuilt crystal but it doesn't require any additional circuitry except power to it to generate uh, um, the required uh, oscillations or the clock and uh, as we said um, this crystal requires some clock stabilization circuitry which will be an additional circuitry which, which could be inside a microcontroller or any other uh, uh, devices that we use with a crystal with um basically crystal is used with microcontrollers um and then this is a very cheap option to use whereas oscillators are mostly used with uh, uh, microprocessors and uh, it is costlier than uh, a, a crystal so if you are using a microcontroller you go with a, a crystal it is not that you cannot use a oscillator uh, we will show if you want to use a oscillator with uh, um, and then crystal basically gives a simple uh, stable output um, it gives a clock uh, which is stable but oscillator output is much stable uh, crystal uh, uh, because it has to add some additional circuitry and due to the parasitics that are associated with it uh, there could be some uh, deviation from the basic clock very minute uh, so um, the ppm value the stability value is uh, lesser compared to the um, uh, oscillator and uh, as we said the crystal is mostly used in microcontrollers whereas the uh, um, oscillator is used for uh, microprocessors so if you see a crystal basically this is the vibrating element which uh, um, a, a a crystal can be characterized using uh, uh, this equivalent circuit with the RLC circuit and C in parallel, a basic resonant circuit which uh, uh, can give out some uh, uh, signal. Whereas <coughs> the oscillator circuitry would be this way. If you see here, this is the output pin. Uh, as we mentioned, there are four uh, pins with a oscillator. One is uh, um, the power supply, second one is ground, the third one is the output and the fourth one is not connected anywhere. So it's a N NC pin. So you can see here, the, this is the power pin which is the enable pin for which we provide the power and then this is the output from where you take it and these two are the, um, uh, this is the internal crystal. Uh, so <clears throat> and this is the ground you see here. So there are three pins required enable ground and the output whereas uh, um, the crystal which we are talking here is inbuilt into the oscillator with the additional circuitry whereas in microcontroller you where you use a crystal the corresponding circuitry you see here will be inside the microcontroller so a crystal can be used in such scenarios so this is how um, a crystal shall be connected uh, to microcontroller you can see here uh, there is a, a, a external oscillator uh, crystal that is connected to the OSC1 and OS2 pins. So one more advantage of this crystal is that even though you reverse the pins uh, 1 and 2, 
uh, it doesn't cause any harm so you can connect it the either way and you can see here once the uh, enable pin is provided that means the, the, um, for the crystal to be on uh, it generates the uh, uh, free, uh, required frequency which has the all the additional uh, uh, capacitors and the resistors in build there could be another scenario in the microcontrollers where there is only a inverting buffer uh, but uh, um, a capacitors and the resistors need to be added externally so these two scenarios also exist so you have to check your respective microcontroller data sheet to understand how your crystal need to be connected so it's very important that you you have to check this because these capacitors and the resistors are the ones which help you to generate the frequency so uh, just to give a brief of how a crystal works uh, um, so when uh, there is a frequency that is generated from this crystal this particular buffer generates a 180 degrees uh, out of phase uh, and then these corresponding resistors and capacitors help uh, to provide uh, uh, again um, the inversion of it so that uh, the total signal that is generated um, does not change in phase so that's how these capacitors resistors help and also these capacitors help in the resonance uh, uh, where you want to require um, provide uh, like generate the required uh, frequency to um, a simple circuit where uh, some people might have a doubt whether they can connect an oscillator to a microcontroller or not <coughs> So uh, most of the times we see that uh, um, a crystal only is connected to XTAL1 and XTAL2 pins of the microcontroller um, with external capacitors and sometimes external resistor as well. But if one wants to connect a oscillator, so what they can do is uh, uh, they can connect the output pin direct output pin of this oscillator to directly to XSC in. Uh, so that uh, um, it, it is taken as uh, input clock by the microcontroller. So if you want to, you, you can use an oscillator, but it's a costly option uh, because uh, whatever the circuitry that is present inside the oscillator, some of the circuitry is present, already present inside the microcontroller. So you can save some space, but if, still if you want to use the oscillator, you can go ahead and use it. And now <coughs> microcontroller doesn't... Uh, have that corresponding circuitry so you generally use a oscillator so controller uses a um, crystal and microprocessor uses an oscillator now let us see a simple example uh, of how a clock tree will be inside a microcontroller so one of the major problem um, that uh, designers face is uh, they are not clear what is the type of clock generated how it is distributed across so every microcontroller or processor will have a reference manual which will have something called a clock tree so clock tree is nothing but it shows how a clock flows from uh, external or internal to different peripherals or to the cpu so one has to remember mainly the basic that entire operation of either a microcontroller or a processor depends on the clock so what is the frequency you are operating and how stable is the clock so each of us has to understand uh, how a clock is flowing what is the clock that can be given to a particular peripheral so when we say peripheral example if you take an uart so this uart uh, uh, if you are talking about a baud rate of 9600 bps so this uh, uh, there will be an uart controller inside the microcontroller to which you will give a clock which is called a peripheral clock for this um, and this clock will help to generate the required baud rate so that is how important the clock is so the clock flows from uh, the uh, external or uh, the internal clock tree to these uh, uh, peripherals so if you see here we are pointing out msp 432 clock tree in this msp 432 clock tree if you see on the top there are two external clocks that can be given one is the low frequency clock and one is the high frequency clock so if you see here the low frequency clock is 32.7 second which is the rtc clock and <coughs> 
high frequency clock uh, uh, is what is generally used uh, for giving clock to the cpu so which can go up to 48 megahertz so based on this uh, uh, you can either uh, divide uh, this clock and provide uh, to the uh, peripherals inside so we will also see how it is done and additionally so as these are two external um, clocks in addition to this um, there are some internal default clocks that are generated so let us assume you have a circuitry where uh, you need to make it cost effective it's a very low frequency of operation you don't need the high speeds so a simple microcontroller internal clock can be used uh, to <coughs> generate a clock for uh, uh, in such scenarios so here if you see uh, such clocks are one is called a dco digitally controlled oscillator which also can generate up to 48 megahertz so one might ask why if there is a 48 megahertz internally why i want to use a external 48 megahertz and again uh, put an additional cost so one has to remember that uh, external clocks which you use it uh, uh, crystals you use them are uh, very stable compared to the internal logics because uh, internally how you generate these clocks is by dividing or multiplying uh, a clocks which becomes unstable over a period of time so it is very important that <clears throat> If you use a high frequency clock, you use an external clock and then divide or multiply internally um, and then use it. So, so this is DCO which has a default clock output of 3 MHz and uh, which can give up to a clock frequency of 48 MHz. In addition to this, there is one more uh, oscillator internally uh, dis uh, along with this digital controlled oscillator. There is very low frequency oscillator which gives a 9.4 kilohertz uh, frequency and then there is a reference oscillator which gives 32.768 and one to or 128 kilohertz uh, frequency out and uh, there is modulator oscillator um, which can give up to 25 megahertz also there is a system oscillator which can provide 5 megahertz so you can see the number of clocking options that are present inside the microcontroller so when a designer starts using it he has to understand uh, which peripheral clock has to be given which uh, um, input of this clock and then how to divide or use them so generally uh, leaving the other things there will be a cpu inside um, uh, the uh, controller there will be a core for which you have to uh, give a clock so in this msp432 if you see this M clock is the one which goes to the core and also it can provide clock to the uh, peripherals and then uh, there, there are other options HMS clock, uh, SM clock, uh, all these uh, can be provided, uh, can provide clock to the peripherals. So this is how a clock is distributed inside the microcontroller. So everything can be controlled using registers. So there will be registers inside the microcontroller where you have to set these registers and get the corresponding outputs. So important that designer should uh, have a grip of this and he should be able to tell about any clock at any point of time when he is designing. So very important, uh, little, critic, little complex, uh, but once you get into the system and you get used to it, very easy to understand. So now if you have any doubts just uh, uh, about the clocks you are working you go back to your uh, microcontroller circuitry and see how uh, the clock is distributed now you will have an easy glimpse of the things happening but uh, one thing is that you have to read more understand the things uh, and uh, if you can uh, have a, a pencil sketch of how uh, you are distributing your clock, how you are dividing your clock and what are all the peripherals you are providing to your clock and have it before you when you are programming. I think that will be a very easy input to set your uh, uh, registers. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please get back to us uh, uh, or uh, write a comment uh, uh, below. Thank you.